What's up, Magic Family? KG Smooth. You know, today we are going behind the magic, but in a different way. Uh, we're going to talk about love and relationships. As you all know, I'm currently on a season four of Ready to Love. And uh, I have with me today, uh, you probably have seen this man's face on uh, the hit reality show that is Married at First Sight. He was helping out his good friend, Chris Williams, on the show. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome um, entrepreneur, author, pastor, just all around great guy, Pastor Dwight Buckner Jr. How you doing, man? Hey, man. How you doing, man? Thank you for having me, KG. What an honor, man. Thank you for having me. Blessings. I'm glad to be here with you, brother. Um, right. Man, what was your experience with uh, filming uh, reality TV? Well, uh, the experience was wonderful, man. Number one, um, I didn't necessarily ask for television, but I, I reluctantly accepted it. And when I went on, you know, God kept opening up doors. And then I realized, you know, after a few episodes, I said, you know what? I'm, th I'm thanking God that I'm able to counsel and, and, and reach people on a larger scale by just giving them some words of wisdom. So I really have embraced and loved the experience, man. It was just wonderful, man. Absolutely wonderful. We can yeah. do it again. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I enjoyed <laughs> the process uh, myself, and I got the opportunity to uh, experience yeah. two different formats of filming. So, um, yeah, right. I, I, wanted to, I never thought that it would come in the form of reality television, but. Um, right, right. Yeah, Me either. Right, right. God is, he, he's, he's, he's awesome, isn't he? I never thought it either, but he, he does what he does. <laughs> well, yeah. And I mean, when, when you're faithful and you, and you stay, you know, prayerful and, and, and thankful, he, he can make things happen. And, and, and we can also make things happen, manifesting things as long as we stay Absolutely. faithful. That's a whole nother, you know, we, yeah. we're not here to talk about on the spirituality because I know we could uh, definitely right. uh, get into that. But, um, right. You know, with the situation um, with Chris and Paige uh, on the show, I think the big takeaway is probably keeping your relationship to yourself. You know, I'm a big component in our private life is just that, mm -hmm. private, you know. Right. Uh, it, it, back in the day, you know, when I got into radio, there was three unknown rules. You, you don't disclose, you know, uh, your age, your your marital status and your finances. Mm -hmm. But now in this day and age of, you know, social media and everything is sharing, 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 people right. want to, you know, put all their business out there right. and, uh, and it backfires a lot of times. So um, explain why privacy is the best for a relationship. Well, I think um, the whole the whole blessing when you're courting or dating somebody is to see if there are any uh, to see if you guys have intentions on making something happen permanently. Um, one mistake that I made, I always revert back to me. One mistake I made early on, way before I got married, was I would oftentimes date people um, who I would automatically say, you know, this is the one. Uh, this is going to work. Um, but whenever time takes its toll, like it does, and time has its perfect work, it always reveals a character of not only you, but the person you're with. And so then you can decide, is this somebody that I want to deal with? Is somebody? And see, the danger in not keeping uh, things private is that once, you be, once you're unexposed, once you're exposed, you never can be unexposed. Mm -hmm. And so um, until you finally make a decision and say, hey, this is something that I want to work on for about a year before we make it known. You're pretty much saying I want it to be tight knit, linked up, make sure we're ready uh, before we actually do this. I think a lot of people uh, can be actually in love with the idea of marriage and not actually know what marriage entails. Um, you got to consider the fact that when you get married, um, it can't all be about you anymore. You've got to pick your shoes up and you got to bring dinner home and make dinner. Um, you've got to pick the kids up when you have kids. You've got stuff you've got to do. And so it's this two becoming one flesh, but it's a process. And so for, for many years, I was in love with the idea of marriage. But when I actually got married, I realized, hey, this is going to be a lot of work, especially if we're going to stay together. So I would even say to those who are single right now that are dating um, that if you plan on getting married, you better start sharing 
<laughs> and you better start putting the other person first. Yeah, go ahead. If you don't mind indulging me uh, on the marriage conversation and your realization once you got there, um, if we can just go down a little deeper hole, um, it just seems like a, a, a business contract in the in the end. <laughs> um, it's like a joint partnership, like we're putting things together because if two souls are, have come together under God to proclaim their love and he already knows it because he created it and set it up as to where, you know, you guys are there. Um, <laughs> When it comes down to the construct of it, was what was that like? You know, one of those realizations, like, yeah, I'm still stay, you know, in the spirit of it all. But man, this is a uh, this is about money at the end of it all. Well, as nobody I, ever like I heard a, a gentleman say earlier this week, like, you know, when divorce happens, you know, it's over property, it's over it's over things. Nobody ever went to divorce court talking about I want my love back. So it ain't mm -hmm. about love at all, you know. Mm -hmm. So I'm. Well, let me let me let me let me say this. Um, statistics show that ninety eight point one percent of the time that couples pray together, they stay together. Now, I think what happens a lot of times is th that we have to go back to the motive of why you wanted to get married in the first place. If it was to make a bunch of money together, that's the wrong reason. If it was, to, if it's not, if it's not love and you knowing God putting you guys together to build a future, that's different. But we got a lot of people nowadays that will get married for, for some, some silly reasons. Number one, you, some people get married because they don't want to be by themselves. Some people get married uh, just to, to outdo or to prove to another couple that I can do what you did or somebody wants me. Uh, uh, simply because they want to live off of that individual. And so um, I think when, when we take prayer out of the equation, then it starts turning into what it shouldn't. Then when you get into the whole, well, how much money do we got? Well, we're getting divorced. I'm taking this. I'm taking that. This is my house. This is your house. You start getting to all this material stuff. And that's not about marriage because number one, you are supposed to share everything. And if you have a real uh, God-centered marriage, material stuff is last. That stuff doesn't mean as long as you got each other. Me and my wife could move out of the house. We can move into an apartment right now and we'll still love each other. I mean, because we're invested in each other's lives. You know, thank God we haven't had to do that. But I'm not going to leave her. She's not going to leave me. I told my wife, if you leave me, I'm moving next door because I'm invested in this. And so you got to make sure this is something you're invested in and that it's not a contract. It's a covenant. You go before God. You say, God, this is what I want. This is what they want. And we're making a decision before you to stay together until death do us part. Nowadays, we take the whole death do us part equation out of it. We, somebody makes us mad. We want to get a divorce. Somebody makes more money than us. We want to get a divorce. Somebody says something mean. We want to get a divorce. Those are not grounds to get a divorce. The only, the only grounds to literally get a divorce in Bible are infidelity. If somebody cheats on you or something abusive, those are grounds for divorce. But name calling, uh, for a day or two and you guys apologize, that's not a reason. You can work those things out. In the words of the great uh, Johnny Taylor. Mm -hmm. Come on. <laughs> Come on here. That's it. That's it. That's it. <laughs> no. <laughs> Pastor Buckner is uh, in the building today. We're talking about uh, relationships. I just had to, I'm, I'm glad that you indulged that. I like to you know, go against the grain to get a different side. We got to have balance in this thing. You know, so I, I wanted to get your opinions on um, on that. So uh, what are five things that every man needs in their relationship to be fulfilled? Of course. Well, um, thank you for mentioning that in, in, in the book that comes out in uh, June. Um, a couple of things that I mentioned that men need. Number one, the strong support system. I think he would thrive. And I'm speaking from support from the aspect of if you just say one encouraging word to him, hey, you're, you're, you, I love you, or um, thank you for what you did. I thank you for being the man you are. Those type of words of affirmation and support systems will make a man do whatever for you. And I think men 
Um, sometimes men fail when they don't have the right support system. But if you put the right support system around a man and continue to push him, he will thrive and literally become the best that he can become. Um, another thing that I mentioned in the book is all men need. Did you want to say something there? I, I did because I didn't properly. Yeah, I didn't properly mention the book, and I and I felt oh, okay. really kind of bad. Yes, uh, five things that men needs is uh, Pastor Buckner's new book that will be out uh, in June. And so, yeah, forgive me for that, but no, continue. Oh, no problem. Uh, another thing I mentioned to um, KG in the book is every man needs affirmation. Mm -hmm. um, one. One thing I do mention, and I took it from scripture, and not to be too deep, but I took it from scripture. And when we look at oh, the life of the right one about going deep, I mean, we, okay. I mean you call me Alice because we can go down that rabbit hole. <laughs> so one thing I mentioned in scripture is um, David. Um, here it is. His father doesn't necessarily pay him that much attention. Um, Samuel comes, anoints him as the next king, and then Saul likes him because he defeated Goliath and finds out he has an unusual anointing and skill. Saul brings him into the kingdom and finds out that, you know, he kills his tens of thousands, Saul kills thousands. And now Saul is jealous of the person he's supposed to be mentoring. So now David finds a friend in Saul's son, Jonathan. Jonathan takes his robe off and says, hey man, if anything happens to my kids, I got you. David says, if anything happens to me, I got your kids. So they make this, this, this bond, this covenant. What Jonathan was doing that I believe is he was affirming David by giving him his robe, saying, you know what, man, though some of them rejected you, I got your back. And one of the things I'm real big on, even I have two boys, seven and eight, Elias and Malachi. And one, one thing I do is I constantly give them hugs. I give them kisses and I let them know that daddy loves them. I affirm them and I affirm them as a man to let them know that you don't need to look for affirmation anywhere else because your daddy's affirming you. And when a man has affirmation, when a man is affirmed in what he does, I also believe that he would thrive. Absolutely. Yes. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, mm -hmm. If one more thing I could add to that, and I, and I would like go to ahead, go ahead, go think ahead. about this. Um, men tapping in to their divine feminine side, as earlier mm -hmm. we were talking about balance, you know, um, right. in this world today, it is so messed up because it has been led with this uh, masculine energy um, from it, from its inception. And, mm -hmm. you know, now that we are in a different time and we're seeing how, you know, Black women are, you know, the most educated, number one in starting small businesses, you know, making, you know, triple than what their grandmama and mamas, you know, um, made. They're leading uh, the charge and behind every great man is a great woman. I don't think that any man has been successful without the woman being the helpmate, which she really is, you know, um, the foundation. So with men being so hard and rah, 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 like I, I believe that if we tap into our feminine side, because we, but the, all of us in our, uh, in, in our genetic and DNA makeup have both energies mm -hmm. in it. I think mm -hmm. if men tap into that feminine side, I think the world would become a better place and we would switch the frequency um, down here on this planet and love more. Yeah, oh. and, and, yeah, and 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 KG, I'll say this: I think men, uh, for so long, we have been told that, you know, you always have to be tough, uh, you always have to be this, you always got to be strong, and so for that reason, a lot of men have grown up and they've been told not to show emotion, right. uh, not to not to cry, um, not to be overly sensitive. One thing I found out, I'm going to tell you this right now, I have never done more crying since I've been married than, ever, than, I, than, than when, even when I was single. And it's not because something's wrong or because things are going well. It's because I've learned how to be more of an intercessor and learn how to literally pray for my family, even when things weren't even going well. And so for that, I had to learn how to tap into that more emotional side um, and say, hey, you know what, um, Lord, I need you to work this out. And, and it's okay. Uh, 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 to be emotional. Uh, I think one thing um, that we have to understand is that we deal in, in dealing now in a generation that a lot of them deal with depression and depression is frustration turned inwardly, simply meaning 
um, that, hey, I don't have anywhere to let stuff out because I've been holding too much in. And so when, as men, when we become emotional, we're actually saying, hey, I'm gonna let some of this stuff out. Because if I don't let this out, I'm gonna snap. If I don't let this out, I'm gonna lose my mind. If I don't let this out, I'm gonna hit somebody. And so um, I think that it's imperative, yeah, that we we do um, we do uh, allow that emotion to kind of take over and let some things out because we never want to carry around that inward frustration. Because as we get older, we we realize that that very philosophy backfires. Because when you hmm. you know get into your twenties and and, and your thirties and you're in you know relationships and you know y'all go together and then she's saying that you don't show no emotion. Like how come you you so nonchalant about everything? You don't show no well. Hell, growing up, we was told, suck it up, be a man, don't cry, Did, you know, do all uh -huh. this. And, and then early on in life, it, it backfires. And then we're, you know, we're chastised for not sure. Right. Much emotions. It, absolutely. You, you, you said you hit the nail on the head. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it, it, it's it, wild. I know I touched on this earlier when I um, asked you about um, why privacy is best for your relationship. Um, so let's talk about how social media can uh, ruin your relationship. I mean, that's pretty... I yeah. see some things yeah. just in real time from, <laughs> yeah. from the time they first announced it, the middle, and then it ended well, all within a span of uh, three months. Yeah, well, and what couples and what people have to understand, KG, is that it may not even be necessarily be the person you're dating that's causing you to break up. Social media mm -hmm. used the wrong way will cause you to break up. Right. And so um, it's important that you do not put your breakups, your personal business, all of that stuff should not go on social media. I'm amazed out of the date. This is not the dating context, but I'm amazed at the number of people that would post themselves in the hospital uh, on ICU. That, that, that I understand nah, you're sick, people are great for, right for you, but, but there are some things that don't need to be posted. Um, because it, it sends the wrong message and, and it's not sending, you know, it's, it's just sending the wrong message. And I think social media, you got to be very careful. Um, there, there are couples that may want to get back together, but because they put all their business on social media, they don't want to look crazy posting, oh, I got back with them. Now you're looking hypocritical, but had you not ever put stuff on social media, wouldn't nobody even know right. in the first place. So the best thing to do if you break up, just you guys and whoever you're close to know you break up, but don't post it. Don't post it. Don't post it. <laughs> don't post it. Do and not post it. it. And, that, and that's, you know, that's the enemy's plan, though, Pastor. Like, yeah. That yeah. is, that's the enemy's plan to, yeah. to cause that friction. Yes, I, I want you to post yeah. it. Uh, like, you know, sh show us your life. Put it right. on display. You right. Know? So then when things go wrong, not only did you have to deal it within your personal relationship with the person that you, you know, are involved with and everybody else that you have shared yeah. it to, and yeah. you know, causing more detriment and stress and, you know, the depression to you mm -hmm. and, and probably your partner because you yeah. wanted to share it on yeah. social. And, and KG, you've, you've experienced this like I have um, when you're on national television, um, people will post stuff about you who don't know you um, and they'll assume they know you. They'll 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 feel like they know you. They know you based off of a scene, mm -hmm. but they haven't seen the whole movie. They don't even know you. But 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 they just they know that scene. We did eight hours yeah. at that one spot. Yeah, yeah, on, on the scene. You know me now. You know what type of person I am. And so I just five hours, you got two minutes. Right, right. <laughs> I found out, yeah, out of five hours, you got two minutes. And I found out for me what I had to learn because I've I got a good chance to experience criticism. Um, even though you go in with the right motive, there's always some folk out there that say some crazy stuff. But what I've noticed is the best way to respond to criticism on social media is not to respond. Exactly. Don't I don't like give that. anybody anything. To, don't add nothing. Just the, the worst thing to do is to have to argue by yourself. But if you give somebody whoever's critiquing, if you give them something to argue with, now you got to deal with something. But the best way to handle that is to continue to be you, 
Act like don't don't even ignore it. And then that gives people now people are wondering, wow, you know, they didn't respond and, you know, because you're not into that. But you can't let people have your attention, especially on social media. You can't do that. Yeah, I stayed away from it. I made a conscious decision uh, when I did season three of Ready to Love that I'm just not going to get on there. Now, I do like to search the hashtag on Twitter on Friday nights just to see yeah. that there's nothing you know, yeah, it, what, <laughs> I was it, doing it. Funny, yeah. but I purposely stayed away from the Facebook groups and the YouTubes, um, and totally forgot about them. And so when I get other cast members like, yeah, they hate us on here, and this is like, don't even put, don't even bring that energy into your space. Right. Like, right. stay away from right. it. Protect this right. right here. Right there, you go. You said it. Protect, protect your mind because if you go through and start reading all them comments, you, you, you right. jump off a bridge somewhere. And you've got to have, you've got to know that those people don't know you, their opinions, a lot of their opinions, if it's negative, it does not matter. So why read it? I will read, I will read positive stuff, but negative stuff, I, I yeah. won't read none of that. People don't, I, realize I, that. people don't realize that projection is reflection. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Projection is reflection. That's absolutely right. Yeah, yeah. Projection is reflection. Yeah, man. Yeah. What you are think, what you project on me ain't nothing but a reflection on you. You see this, and, and this is the first thought that comes from your head out of your mouth. Mm -hmm. you, you, you got some work to do. And that's just where we're at, Pastor. Like, yeah. Yeah. people need to really look within and do the mm. inner work. And they tap do. into their inner self, to the God in them. Listen to the to Mary, Mary, and Kiara Shear wrote a whole song about it. It's the God in me. You need to mm -hmm. dig deep and sit still mm -hmm. and deal with yourself and Come tap on. into that higher source, man. On, like yeah. everybody keeps looking for somebody to, you know come and help mm -hmm. them or you know you got friends that'll call you up hey i'm thinking about doing this what do you think it doesn't matter what i think mm -hmm. this is for, this is you this is your life yeah. all of the answers are within you if you just be still the the, 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 the bible says ain't there's a song be still and know that i am god right be still listen be still but they be don't want to do that work pastor though they don't no. want to stand they don't want to stand in the mirror naked and look at themselves and have to deal with all right. of the good and the bad and the ugly. Right. They're too afraid. Right. right. They don't want to have to fight it, actually. Right. 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 And 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 the reality is, KG, we all we all have issues. Um, what keeps me from ever doing or saying negative things is the fact that I realize I got issues and I'm no better than nobody else. And so when we think about that, like you said, and we internalize who we really are and look at the mirror, then we'll we'll, we'll God will then begin to make the adjustments that we need. Yeah. Yeah, because we it's all about balance. We we are both. They keep saying like the devil made me do it. Pastor, the devil made me do it. You know, <laughs> you look in that mirror. Guess guess who the devil is? Right, right, right. You. Yeah, you did it. Yeah, you. come on. Yeah, yeah. But you anyway, did it, sir. I appreciate all all of your time. I mean, I'm sure we could. I yeah. I could I could go down so many roads with you. Right. Uh, right. Brain, but uh, we won't do that, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Pastor Dwight Buckner, uh, the book is out in June. What's the date on, on the book? Uh, uh, the, the date should be June uh, 12th, uh, but it, just no just no June, it's dropping. I'll be June dropping that. Dropping. Five yeah, they're getting that men needs. And then he's also got the launch of his podcast, Things That Men Need. Uh, mm -hmm by him and so uh um, you're doing big things man can congratulations on all the success and continue to go up brother i will see you Thank at the top yeah come on here man I, we touch the grill on that we'll see you i'll see you at the top <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, bless you man all right magic family i will see you on the radio <laughs>